Good morning, folks. I hope you all caught your resume posted last night. Some would call it your bragging rights, and I know for a fact they will help you out. But it's a new day over at spaceweathernews.com, and we've got the last 24 hours on our star. Still no sunspots at the umbral fields. Primary feature of note is the coronal hole, a major extension from the northern polar opening. And without spots, there are still no flares, but we've got the solar wind. It was poised to be relevant yesterday after the phi angle shift and density shock, but we only had the smallest of changes in plasma speed, leaving the disruption to Earth's magnetic field to reach a brief KP4 instability point overnight. No storms, and it's waning back now. Folks will get the solar wind midweek off that coronal hole. Meanwhile, we've directly connected to it, and that quake alert we've been discussing peaks the next two days. Quick word on these horrible magnetosphere models due to your questions. These and all such models are human math based on solar wind data and interpretation. Nothing is actually monitoring Earth's field, and the math for these is not so great. It shows absurd things even during quiet times. Garbage in, garbage out. You also get people online saying there is reverse solar wind showing on these. Not only, again, is it a model, not an actual monitor, but the solar wind readers only point at the sun. Another star could be 10 feet behind it, and it would not show up in the data at all. When a CME hits, these models are relevant. Otherwise, it is complete garbage. Folks, the GO-16 data hasn't updated since Friday, so no fun wide views, but on the Himawari side, you can see both the moisture feeding northwest Pacific typhoons and how the continent of Australia is refusing to allow its drought to end. Almost zero return overhead. Cool look into space from Hubble, much closer than we're used to seeing as we come to the large Magellanic Cloud, the Tarantula Nebula, and towards the visually boring end of the feature is a group of stars that is now the focus of these shots because of the red carbon star in the cluster, almost like that cluster has Kachinas all its own. Folks, for those who wonder just what the electron flux is actually good for, it's the satellites in Earth orbit that are most at risk from those electrons, and the duration of the storm appears to be as important as the moment flux. In this paper, they detail how satellites don't have nearly enough shielding. A coronal hole like we're likely to get in the coming years could result in major problems and even total satellite losses due to electric discharge. It turns out that the long-lived nature of the charged particle storms is more dangerous to those satellites than a short-duration CME impact, that coronal holes are presenting the greater risk there, and no, coronal holes do not go away during grand solar minimum, which could begin as early as 2030 or so. If you've never heard of arc storms, they are a very scary and probable part of our future. They can only get worse moving forward, and a new study indicates that water vapor flux in their models can be 20% too low. That is a major issue for forecasting the atmospheric rivers. Website members, we've got a critical deeper look posted last night on dust and plasma and their magic when exposed to electric fields. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.